Hot boy Tok, your messages are not being ignored. Not me getting served an algorithmic tweet this morning uh, of my own like clip of me going, Aah! and then the body of the tweet is um, the goblin in my basement. It, open parentheses, it will die if I catch him. And then I was like, oh my God, who made this tweet? And then I clicked on it and it's at hot boy Tok. Like you're, you're crossing state lines on, on socials, man. The For You page said, send me. And what is this? Poke Doku Master Puzzle by Weedle Twin Eedle. Yeah, we're fucked, lads. Sorry, the video probably got demonetized because of that, but I'm an artist, okay? I will not make compromises. It's the right word for this situation. If your ass is named, no, no offense, if, if you're choosing to name yourself Weedle Twin Eedle, I will not be getting more than three out of nine on the puzzle if I had to guess. That being said, I do know some Alolan forms. No, wait, 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 there's, I can do some of these. Legendary Psychic, maybe you've heard of uh, a little creature called Mewtwo. That's new, bro. Sure. Well, I don't know. Now you got me thinking. How about I play Cresselia instead? My final answer. Okay. Would Mewtwo have been correct? They got me. They would have been correct as well. Okay. All right. Nothing to worry about then. Final evolution? Um, this is easy. Gar Chomp. Yeah, I'm sure on that. Michael? Gar Chomp is not a, a dark Pokemon. He knows bite. It's ground dragon. He knows bite, bro. Moves don't mean types. Oh, so Venusaur could use freaking flamethrower? It doesn't make any sense, bro. Machamp. Perhaps you've heard of him? Yeah, I'm sure on that one. Final Evolution Psychic Alakazam. Final Evolution Dark. Tyranitar. Yeah, I'm sure on that one. You know how I know? He has bite. Legendary dark Pokemon. Fighting, legendary fighting Pokemon doesn't exist. Pokemon doesn't respect hand-to-hand -hand combat. Alola fighting. Alola, is it possible that Alolan Raichu is like 28% psychic? Nope, okay. Alo Alolan, Alolan ex ex executor. You click normal, right? You yes. <laughs> Holy cow! We got five. Legendary fighter. On, to be honest with you, I don't fully know what a legendary Pokemon is in, in the world of Pokemon. It's like rare and it tends not to evolve or literally never evolves. You can only catch it from like a specific encounter in the game, not from any random encounter, something along these lines. Uh, uh, Alolan, Alola, what's this dude's name? Sneasel. <laughs> Sneasler? The Sneasler! Sneasel Hazui? That's a Hazui to you, Kazundite. Colossal G Max. Bro is a damn furnace. Make it make sense. I only have one more guess. Is there like a dark Mewtwo? Le legendary. Oh, I was going to say Lucario. That doesn't make any sense. Legendary. Leg Mewtwo is just psychic. Legendary fighting. Pokemon, a legendary fighter, legendary dark Pokemon, because Alola is going to be unlikely. I'm like, Ninetales Alola is 
ice. Sand shrew Alola is ice. Nothing says Hawaii more than making a, a warm Pokemon cold. Alola, Alola. Alola, ping, a bing bong, Alola, ping. It used to be ping, and it was done. It was quick. Thank you, Earth Rider, for the Great Lakes. Legendary Hemomancer. Legendary dark Pokemon that knows crunch. Yeah, I have no idea. Who's the scariest Pokemon? Who has the darkest energy in Pokemon? It's probably Mr. Mime, to be honest with you. I think he's, bizarrely, he's like a psychic type. Or normal or something. I don't know why the concept of like a legendary fighting Pokemon is so funny to me. Like legendary fire, you're like, okay, it's like a big dragon. But it's hard to imagine that a Pokemon is just like so good at hand-to-hand -hand combat that it's just like beating the shit out of other Pokemon, like Muay Thai style. Like, it makes sense for all the other Pokemon to, like, be afraid of a big dragon or, like, a big, I don't know, like, a ball of pure energy or something like that. But to just be afraid of, like, a guy who's got a shorts on or something like that, it's kind of funny energy. It's kind of funny. Bing! Legendary no longer includes all Ultra Beasts. Oh, well, that would take... So I was going to type Ultra Beast... Freaking Poltergeist. Moltres. Oh, dude, Moltres Galar. That could be a dark type Pokemon. It's on fire. But it could still be a dark type Pokemon. But is that a mythical? I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes! <laughs> dude, we got like six. That's crazy. Bing. I even got some of the, the dev's own picks. Oh, I forgot about... Wait, Zapdos? Zapdos Galar is a fighting type. Okay, I didn't know. Buzzwall, that makes sense. He is freaking huge. Incineroar, most common. Incineroar, most, most common what? A, he's a Lolan? It doesn't even say like a Lola or anything. Crab Brawler, I, I understand him being a fighter, but this guy doesn't even have a Lola in his name. He's the starter. Alola is the region. I mean, that makes sense. Your, your ass isn't named Canada Ryan? Yeah, but like, Raichu's ass is named Raichu Alola. As far as I'm with, no matter how many Ryans are out there, they shouldn't have their country as their last name. Why does this Raichu have its, its last name as its country? Because it's from Kanto? Is it from Kanto? Or like this motherfucker was born in Kanto and then he moved to Alola? Or is this just a Raichu that happened to be born in Alola so they treat him like a second class citizen? Normal Raichu is from Kanto? Normal? Normal Raichu? So Alola Raichu is not normal. You phrased it that way, not me, by the way. <laughs> Sanest bit. Hang on, hang on. I will tell you this is not what you think it is. Me when the coroner finds my gooning folder. This, this is not Master and Commander. The point of the movie, it starts with a slow zoom in onto the ship and it ends with a slow zoom away so that you, it really keeps it in perspective that you've spent the entire movie on a bottle. You have not gone to it. There is no other establishing shots required. Okay, this is a movie um, that takes place in the medieval era. There is war. Um, it 
to me, it doesn't look like Kingdom of Heaven, but I'm going to type it even though I could be wrong. Kingdom of Heaven, a little sandier than this. It also, it doesn't look like the last duel. And if I'm wrong on that, it's going to sting. The haircuts are very last duel-esque, but this is not the last duel. Um, maybe this is like the King Arthur movie. No, nope, okay. Uh, I don't know. As of right now, I don't know what this is. I believe this is an English crest, perhaps from the War of the Roses or the Hundred Years' War. That's Robert Pattinson as the Dauphin, I'm assuming. He, this movie was called, it's like The Last King, the, the, because it has, isn't it Timothy Chalamet is like the, um, yeah, it's called The King, it, perhaps it's just called The King. <laughs> let's go he kind of knows movies at least via context clues boys in the uk still have this haircut if it ain't broke don't fix it brother have you it is the same haircut have you ever seen the tiktok from like after the first lockdown ended and it's the dude who's like um uh, me and the lads in the pub now that lockdown's over and the one dude starts by singing like I'll be your wish, I'll be your hope, I'll be your everything and then it pans and it's like him triplicated at a table I'll be your love, I'll be your hope, be everything that and then it's a new beginning, a reason for living it's so good. I want to stay with you on a mountain. <laughs> it's, it's inspiring. Anyway, what if NL got a low taper fade? So true. So true. What soccer team sings that? You know what I was thinking? I don't know if Americans and Europeans know this. So as a European-American, I'm in, from Canada, um, I have to bridge the gap. It's so funny. My whole life, having never been to mainland Europe, at least, unless you count Sweden, but it's more peninsular in my head. North American soccer fans, if I was going to draw up a stereotype, are all 48-year-old C-level executive tech workers from Seattle, San Francisco, and like Austin, Texas, and I don't know, maybe like Milwaukee. They're button up craft beer enjoyers. They're endurance athletes. They compete in like Ironman competitions and stuff like that. They wear Patagonia vests. It was only when I started to inhabit social media that I realized in the United Kingdom, it's actually multiplied by negative one. The most insane people you'll ever meet from the United Kingdom have a professional footballer as their avatar on Twitter. If a British person tweets something toxic or like actually criminal, there's like a 99% chance that their profile photo is going to be a dude celebrating a goal with his arms out like this. It's, it's actually insane. The, the stereotype of a sports van is as soon as you cross the international date line, it flips to the exact other side of the political compass. It's hard. By the way, thank you, Daniel. Thank you for the gifted subscriptions. I will get ready to learn it. Daniel, I'm talking, maybe you can relate to this. I'm talking about how funny it is that the stereotype of someone who watches soccer in North America is like an upper middle class executive at a fortune 500 company that uh underpays people to deliver mcdonald's to your front door and in europe it's the exact opposite it's like you are an insane person who's gonna like throw a brick through my front window because i like you know disagree with you on whether they're chips or french fries now it's you have to understand if you live in the UK, I understand that it's like normalized for you. 
it's so funny as a North American to think of somebody like that sitting down with a beer and watching a 90-minute scoreless game. That's actually so funny. It's like not something that you would build from first principles if you were to have to build the stereotype for yourself. You would expect that they'd be in the, some sort of sport where people would be like, like football, like American football. Like, ah, you know, let's good parlay. This dude's going to get CTE on this. Brock Purdy is going to get sacked 12 times in the third quarter. Like, it's just hard to imagine like a quote unquote football hooligan sitting down and like cheering and like getting drunk out of his mind for a 0-0 football match. It's, and that's what's funny. Like, that's, that's the juice that keeps life squeezing as far as I'm concerned. Anyway. During the 2005 season, this quarterback led Denver to a 13-3 record and beat Tom Brady and the Patriots in the divisional round before losing to Pittsburgh in the AFC Championship. Jake Plummer. Yes! You asked me anything about the NFL in 2005. Did you see? I, I, the camera got lightheaded for a second. The white balance got all screwed up. Who won? 2005? Probably the Stillers, if I had to guess. Probably the Stillers. Mm, yeah, probably the Stillers. Sounds right to me. You are correct. <laughs> it wasn't the Colts. Colts won the Super Bowl in 2007 after the 2006 season. I know that because it's one of the first Super Bowls I watched in full. And uh, it's the one that gets referenced all the time because people are always like, if Rex Grossman can make it to the Super Bowl, then anyone can. As a first-time head coach, Vinny Del Negro led this Eastern Conference team to the NBA playoffs in 2009 and 2010, but got dismissed after his second season. Eastern Conference team that was okay for two years in 2009 and 2010, Orlando Magic. Celtics. He got dismissed? Didn't they win the championship in 2010? Or 2000, 2008. I'm thinking of 2008. It was the Bulls, the Bulls and the Bears. Uh, this Asian country finished in fourth place during the 2002 World Cup. That's South Korea, which is very inspiring as long as you don't uh, look into any of the games in the elimination rounds that led up to them coming in fourth place. I'm, I'm just, it's, it is still inspiring. It's still inspiring. Do it right for less and never stop improving have been slogans used by this American retailer. Do it right. Home Depot, do it right for less. Home Depot, do it right. Low, Lowe's, do it right for less. <laughs> Lowe's, this is Matt LeBlanc's head and Jeremy Piven's face. That's not even close. Who and who? <laughs> him, me, him, him, me. With orange feathers and yellow colored feet and beak, Sonny the Cuckoo Bird is the mascot for this sugary and chocolatey cereal. What is Cocoa Puffs, I'm assuming? What actor has this TV filmography? American Horror Story, Mayor of Easttown, Pose, WandaVision, and Dahmer, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. It's Evan, Evan Peters. Yeah! He plays fast guy in WandaVision. I knew it was Evan something. Later getting a 2016 sequel, Ben and Stiller played really, really, really ridiculously good looking male models in this 2001 comedy, Zoolander. This English pop rock band had two songs hit number one on the Billboard 1985. Everybody wants to rule the world and shout tears for fears. 
Uh, head over heels and uh, Mother's Talk got robbed, by the way. Those should have hit number one as well. What's the, the celebrity Jeopardy quote we always use? Whenever, like, because the NFL one is always like, how many hairs does Troy Polamalu have on his head? And then the cultural questions are like, as a curd or served cold, this liquid comes from a cow's udder. Eighty-three percent got Zoolander. You love to see it. Milk. It is milk. Zoolander's that big. I mean, it's a it's a popular movie in my demo for sure. For all the greatness of the eighties, Tears for Fears really isn't it. Brother, Tears for Fears. I mean, Songs from the Big Chair has a case. I would not put it in the triple S tier unassailable albums of all time, but I would put it in the double S tier. You better have a darn good reason for coming at Tears for Fears when there's a lot of straight garbage out there. It's, that's an incredible album. If you put it in the triple S tier, I don't mind, by the way. I feel like a hater just for saying it's one of the best albums of all time, probably, instead of definitely. Dust Sock, Iron Glove, Honey Bat, Top Pat, Thimble. What would cost more, a simple thimble or a single shingle? A simple thimble could cost less than a single shingle would, I guess. Hmm. Honey. Dun, duk, dun, ch, dun. Bugs, bugs, things that you, things that go buzz, <laughs> things that fly, related to B, ball, base, bat, and glove, and strike. Baseball equipment, good. Very good. Lick, blow. Honey, sock. Blow, bugs, dust. Iron, dust. It's not chores, huh? Things a vacuum does. <laughs> the vacuum does not blow, by the way. Top hat. Boot. Sock. Things you can, you can sew. <laughs> this, is, this is tough. It feels tough. Bad. You can iron out, you can blow out, you can strike out, or you can boot out. Are you kidding me? That wasn't even close. I, you iron out problems, blow out is like a sports term, strike out, the sports term as well, boot out, like to kick someone out. This one seems tough. Iron and dust are like chores. But there's nothing else here that's really like a chore. It can bug someone. It could be a bug. Bugs fly. Things that annoy you. Dust. Things, things you don't want to breathe. Thimble. Sock. Iron. Things related to... You strike while the iron is hot. <laughs> Honey, boot, boot, but words that start with B. They don't like that one. They don't like words that start with B. Things you do with your mouth. 
bugs. You, you strike someone, you strike a match. You sock someone in the, these are words for hit. Slang for punches. What? Strike, sock, blow, do a dust up, a dust, a lick. A lick is another type of punch. Hard hit. It's so easy to just be like, fuck it, we're out, and then just deliberately throw. I'm fighting against a natural impulse. Like this, they all seem relevant to me. Thimble, dust, iron. These are like things you use for household ch chores. <laughs> dust, boot, honey, honey. Top hat. What are things in Alice in Wonderland? But I don't know what the other one... Is honey in Alice in Wonderland? Is anything but a top hat in Alice in Wonderland? Things the Mad Hatter has at his tea party in Alice in Wonderland? Next time. Original... Oh, Monopoly tokens! <laughs> Oh, man. Monopoly tokens, of course. I was thinking too uh, verbally. I was doing word association. Bunny one felt gettable. Bad bunny. Honey bunny. Honey bunny's a little... That's a stretch for me. But it is what it is. Sudden desire, urge, painter's stand, easel. It can precede Joel and goat. Billy. <laughs> Ecosystem that rivals the rainforest in biodiversity. Unit for a comedian or a weightlifter. Set. R hair and makeup. Parts of an archipelago, gulfs, all-out brawl, Malay, Uber alternative, lift. Okay, we got some problems here. Ecosystem is reef. This is aisles. I must have spelled easels wrong. This is whim. Okay. Did I spell easel wrong? You, you did have the hueb. You overwrote it. You put it in gulf? I guess isles make sense. There's gulfs in there too. An archipelago must, by, if it has islands, it must necessarily have gulfs. No? Come on, it must, man. A gulf is the space between land and water. Look up gulf for me? No, I don't live in Galveston, and I never will. Especially since they're about to secede. Love organic beats. Four individual packs of 10, ounce, 10 ounces of cooked beets, 40 ounces of beets, 1.2 kilograms, that's a lot. That's prob I, I've been known to consume a beet now and then. It wouldn't surprise me if this box represents more beets than I've ever eaten in my entire life. Didn't eat beets for like 24 years, and then Whenever they came served with a meal that I was having, I eat them. But that's like two times a year maximum. And it's usually like three slices of beet. So this may represent my entire life's consumption of this vegetable, to be honest with you. Over 35 years. Um, I feel like beets are not that expensive to grow, if I had to guess. But the... They appeal to 
consumers who might have a little bit more disposable income, if I had to guess at a correlation, which could lead to upwards pricing pressure. I'm going to say, let me think about this. I'm doing a quick conversion. If red peppers are like $2 American per pound, that would mean that they're $5 a kilogram, which would mean that this is $5 worth of red peppers. That doesn't check out. This is not going to be under $5. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. $6.99. Oh, you know what? Not that bad. Now you put in a little premium for the, them being cooked. It actually made sense. That, there was good reasoning involved there. Can I say something without um, red pepper heads getting mad at me? The reason red pepper came into my mind is because I, I did buy one yesterday to put in my daughter's pasta. That is a vegetable that should not cost as much as it does. Red pepper haters or red pepper lovers, my quarrel is not with you. My quarrel is with the red pepper growers. We're getting bent over a barrel because of market dynamics, okay? There's no way that a carrot should be like 21 cents and a single red pepper should be like $2.79. It's insanity. It's just because of demand. Now, I, I understand supply and command, as they say on the trailer park boys, but can we get a freaking bone here, bro? Can we get a freaking bone? It's crazy. Hey, ghost pepper, ghost pepper. I'm going to take your gifted subscriptions as a sign that you believe in me. You agree with what I'm saying. I've seen organic red peppers that are $7. It's crazy out here, man. Just buy a green pepper? No, because then you pedantic Andes would be like, why didn't you just buy a red pepper instead? Didn't you know it's the same species, just one is underripe? No fruit is underripe or overripe. It's whenever you want to eat it, that's when it's ripe. God isn't up there checking a rubric. Look at all these motherfuckers down here eating the red peppers when they're still green. They have a different taste when they're green than they do when they're red. Sometimes the green pepper is better, sometimes the red pepper is better. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. I'm a green pepper enjoyer. What about yellow? Only time I ever buy a yellow pepper is if I'm like making chili and I'm like, this is too many green peppers. <laughs> I need a little extra color in this. I'll get like two green peppers and one yellow pepper and I'm like, yeah, that'll do it. They say you've got to eat the rainbow to get all your vitamins. Red pepper, green pepper, yellow pepper. Me when I've got to eat the indigo pepper. <clears throat> Globla. Very few blue foods. Hey, paper mache Mephistopheles, thanks for the gifted subscriptions as well. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. There are, there are very few blue foods. Blueberries. I'll give you blueberries, even though we could argue it, because they are purple on the outside, and then like, kind of like white to yellow on the inside. So close, that's a shape. <laughs> Blue Gatorade. That's what I was thinking because I, one of the BioSteel packs I use is blue. And I've, like, obviously it's completely artificial. But what's crazy is, like, when I get the blue one, because I just close my eyes and pick in the variety pack randomly, when I get the blue one, I'm like, oh, because it doesn't taste as good. But for some reason, it feels like it hydrates you way better. 
Like I think when your brain sees you drinking something blue, it's like this is like super water. It sends like a little chemical signal to your cells that's like increase the uptake on this bitch stat. Your cells are like. <laughs> if you drink something that's yellow, I don't care if it's like Pedialyte, your brain sends a message that's like, don't just let it pass through. Just let it pass. Everybody, all the cells are shutting their doors while like what your brain thinks is piss passes through your digestive system. I'm not piss. Let me in. I'm not piss. I'm lemon lime. I'm lemon lime. Bangladesh. Okay. How about Papua New Guinea? Good, good. Honestly, good. Azerbaijan? Much warmer. 1,300 kilometers away from Azerbaijan. Qatar. It's cooler. Good, good, good. It's good. Fine by me. Honestly, I don't mind. 1,300 kilometers away. We had like Belarus yesterday, right? Poland? It's warmer. It's 130 kilometers away from Poland. Bulgaria. It's adjacent to the answer. I can do this. <laughs> Turkey. Turkey is cool. You heard me say it. I, I said it here first, folks. I did. North Macedonia. That's warmer, but it's not adjacent. Moldova. That's adjacent. So close. So close. Romania. The mystery country is Romania. Yippee. This is like my version of smarter every day. Our geography isn't getting better all at once. This is a perfect example, bro. Two weeks ago, I would not have been able to tell you that the, this one that looks like a Goomba from the Super Mario Brothers movie yelling really loud is Senegal. But that's that little tongue part there, that's the Gambia, bro. That's the Gambia. We're getting a little bit smarter every single day. The problem is, on a small time scale, it's like we still look pretty dumb like day to day. But if you were to compare us in a year... From where we are right now, brother, we're going to be living in a whole different galaxy, especially with movies. Like, I feel like my movie knowledge has really kicked off again ever since I started watching them again. <laughs> 20th Century Fox, 2003. This is the February I was in ninth grade, which means this shit is Daredevil. <laughs> That's the way you do it. You play the Wordles on the Twitch TV. Miramax, this is probably Oscar bait and post-Oscar nominations. It's continuing to make money. It stars Renee Zellweger. 2003, oh, this is crazy. Because it, it, I want to say Bridget Jones, or this could be Chicago, brother. This could be it's, uh, all that jazz. You know what I'm saying, Chicago? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Walt Disney opened to $11 million. Starring John Goodman. This would be... It's not Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc. Um, it was 2001. And it is an animated movie. It wouldn't be The Emperor's New Groove. That's earlier. And it also um, would have David Spade as the first star. So we'll have to come back to that. I don't, I don't know that yet. Jackie Chan, Touchstone Pictures, 2003. I think there's no choice. That must be the tuxedo. In that case, it must be Shanghai uh, Nights. Okay. 
Paramount Pictures didn't even look at this one. 49 million, very, very slim drop off week two. Probably a critical or audience darling, starring Kate Hudson. 2003, this is how to lose a guy in 10 days. The Pixar movie from 2003 is Finding Nemo. So this must be a Disney movie, like a full stop Disney movie. It's not their best period. Tagline, feel the jungle beat. It's five years after Tarzan. <laughs> feel the jungle beat. Haley Joel Osmond. Mowgli is like the Lion King 2? Or is it the Jungle Book 2? The Jungle Book 2. Who would have thought? <laughs> Pretty good day, though. Pretty good day. 65th percentile. I can't believe that they put uh, the Jungle Book 2 in theaters. That shit didn't go straight to the Disney vault. Yeah, Disney did this for a while. They would come out with like a classic movie and then 10 years later, they're like, we're washed. Just make quick sequels to them and put them out in that uh, white soft plastic VHS case. They still do that? Bro, have some respect. Frozen 2 went to theaters. It shouldn't have, though. Frozen 2 is okay. It's not as good as the first one, but it's not as bad as people would have expected it. It's better than one. You've watched too many video essays. No offense, Jay. I know that's a, that's a Jay take as well. Phantom. Tim Curry. I love you. Multiple endings, Tim Curry. Mystery, this is Clue. Based on a board game. Gerard Butler. Phantom of the Opera. Andrew Lloyd Webber. Theater, I love you, man. Is going to be, maybe it's, it, who's, which one of these connects to I love you, man? I love you, I love you 3000, Iron Man. I love you. 3,000. So iron science. I thought it was going to be I Love You Man, Paul Rudd, Jason Siegel. This is based on a board game, which means we're going to need to do... A weird, there's Weird Science, which I think is John Hughes. So Hot Swap Me. Hot, maybe it's, it is John Hughes. Hot Swap Me. Okay, now the connection. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Mystery man, phantom science, mystery man, mystery man, multiple endings. I prefer when it reveals itself to me immediately, <laughs> as you might expect. Why was I thinking that John Hughes was John Williams? John Hughes, Tim Curry. Maybe it's not the Home Alone 2. <coughs> Pardon me. Phantom, Phantom. Could it, Mystery Man, Phantom? I've got Greg Kinnear on the brain. Thought it could be mystery men. I have no idea. I have no clue. Based on a board game, I don't think Battleship is here. Was Gerard Butler in Battleship? Wouldn't be John Hughes, probably be science. Weird, weird theater. Weird theater with a mystery attached. 
Gerard Butler Science Geostorm. I think we already played Iron over there. I love you, weird Andrew Lloyd Webber mystery. A hemomancer. Multiple endings. Gerard Butler was in 300, which is one tenth of 3,000 if we're playing math, dull. Kelly LeBrock, isn't Kelly LeBrock the female lead from Top Gun? But I don't think anything here is related to Top Gun, and I don't know what else she's in. Weird, here's what goes together. Weird Man, Tim Curry. I don't know what the last one is. That's Kelly McGillis. Oh, who's Kelly LeBrock? Movie number five. Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie. Mystery Science Theater 3000. Of course. I should have gotten that one. Especially as a mic guy. A phantom. It's literally just the title. It's hard work to put together these puzzles to find things that, that make sense. Jonah's also great. Jonah is like, the new series, the, the two seasons they did, are heavily underrated. They're exactly as good as Mystery Science Theater 3000's like, original run, in my opinion. The only thing that I would say is that they had 10 years of mythologizing Mystery Science Theater, Theater 3000 as if like every episode was nonstop, like banger, 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 like two hours of... No, no, no. It took... Like the average Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode is actually like kind of mid with like eight standout jokes. But it's great content. I like it. That's exactly what... The, the hit rate is for the new series as well. It's just after 10 years of going, you know, big, large, McHuge, watch out for snakes, you know, Ega, et cetera, et cetera. My, 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 Mitchell, like that, those jokes become like mythologized and no new content could ever compete with it in the eyes of the, the masses, at least. Movies where a dog on the lives. Movies with zombies. Movies that take place in Japan. Bro almost said Shanghai Noon. <laughs> and then there's a Constantine, uh, there's a Keanu Reeves connector. Maybe Shanghai Noon does take place partly in Japan. Zombies is here. It's not that, it's not Wedding Crashers. The other one is I Am Legend, bro. Okay, just one second. Because it looks like we're one away, but every time you move one, you have to, by necessity, move two. So we're not as close as it looks, but we know what we're looking for. This will be the Keanu Reeves hole. Which means we have... This, this will be our, is this going to be our zombie hole or is this, they're, they're both two away. No, this one, okay, this is going to be our zombie hole, which means you need to go here and then you two need to swap. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure Lost in Translation needs to get out of there too for speed. And then you two need to swap. Oh, okay, okay, we got there. That was a good one. Dogs, zombie, ghouls, Keanu Reeves, Owen Wilson, Owen Wilson and Japan, Owen Wilson and Japan. Zombie slash zombie likes. <laughs> They built in the pedanticness. He will never remember green is the connector. 
I built it with green as the connector, bro. You could have used two less swaps. Your ass could, you know, watch a movie instead of playing 12 games of League of Legends every night. Don't let me tell you which one's better for you. You're the one criticizing my life to begin with, right? I'm merely responding. Responding to aggression with aggression is not aggressive. It's defensive. Take it from the expert of being defensive. The family plan. A hemomancer. Spotted? Hemomancer spotted? POV, you are the guy in 2023 making the most influential TikTok of January 2024. This is Mark Wahlberg. And I've seen this lady and stuff, but I don't know her name. We know lots of people in Saltburn. I can get here, just give me a, it's literally only going to take a second. It's actually better if I do it in my head first instead of the other way around. I have it. I have it. Rosamund Pike, Gone Girl, Ben Affleck, Goodwill Hunt, uh, The Last Duel, Matt Damon, The Departed, Mark Wahlberg. Flip me. Rosamund, Gone Girl, Ben Affleck, The Last Duel, Matt Damon, The Departed, Mark Wahlberg, The Family Plan. 16 seconds. As long as you ignore the steps that I took in the middle, or at the start, where I didn't turn the timer on. <laughs> the prep is the important part, man. Michelle. Oh, it's Michelle Monaghan. And then, of course, she's in Mission Impossible Fallout with Lolly Adifopi. Oh, my mistake. It's an easy three from Peter Dinklage. From Peter Dinklage? Well, how do you... But, no, no, no. Dude, you have to start somewhere. How'd you get to Peter Dinklage, you son of a bitch? From I Care A Lot. Rosamund Pike, I Care A Lot. Peter Dinklage. To a movie with... Oh, Transformers. It's honestly embarrassing for you that you know what Transformers movie Mark Wahlberg is in with Peter Dinklage. I'm happy I don't know that. I'm happy I'm not cursed by that knowledge. Freddie Babe gave me a lull. Freddie Babe, of course, Sine 2 Nerdle superstar. Getting a lull, that's like getting a lull from Wayne Gretzky. So I, can, I made the person laugh who made 100 people laugh, so technically I win. Why aren't you Michael Bay pilled? Excuse me, I watched The Rock not but two weeks ago. Plus two for Dire Straits. There's just something about money for nothing. It came on in the car when I was driving my kid to daycare this morning. I like any rock and roll song. I'm 100 years old. I call it rock and roll still. It starts with like just a synth in the background, like, and then just a dude in going like increasingly ape shit on the drums. And then they, they say, cut that shit out. And then Mark Knopfler. I don't even know what he's, he's playing like a VCR or something like that, tuned through like a, an amp reverse. Like it sounds like a, a, the guitar is dying, like it's its death rattle. And yes, it's, it hits you, like it's the square waves from like uh, the NES Pictionary theme. <sighs> It's a wah put on halfway. I knew that. Pacifier. <laughs> I have no idea, man. Dog. Originally on the Xbox 360. <laughs> 
I'm going to know it. Is this the Xbox 360 version of Catan? <laughs> Die Ertz Inzel? <laughs> Did you see the... <laughs> you, you know what? You already know what I'm going to say. RPG. Lost Odyssey. Is that utterly enthralling? Of course. Came out in 2010. Unless it's uh, Rock Band 3, there's no shot I know it. This, honestly, I know this is not Rock Band 3, but this guy kind of looks like he's about to pick up the bass. Oh, it's, uh, it's Fable 2, because it's from Lionhead Studios. It can't be Fable 1, that was like 2004. And it can't be Fable 3, because that I got that with my Xbox 360 and never opened it. What? That makes sense, actually. That would explain why it was a pack-in in 2012. Did you see the Five Guys sign in Munich, Germany that said, Wir sucking dick? <laughs> and the tweet says, Five Guys in Munich is sucking dick! Oh, man. Reading non-English languages as if they were English is... It's so good. It's a bit that never ends. Game bill. We we I I do love we have an in big problem. Oh man. Why is it always the Germans? Hey, we have an in big problem with the Dutch, man. It's only the Germans, like, 99% of the time. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the other 1% of the time, it's the Dutch. This shit is fucking... I know this game. It's uh, Ink Boy. I played this. Ink Boy. Neon, is this Neon Abyss? It is neat. <laughs> Remember when Dan, <laughs> for like 18 weeks straight, he was like, this is the best roguelite of 2020. Oh, man. The Isaac Killer. <laughs> no, no disrespect. Oh, man. He did, he did put it above Hades in his roguelite tier list. Dude, this is the thing. We got to stop trying to correct insane opinions. It's better when not everybody agrees, man. It's just funnier this way. This is like some Phantom Abyss stuff. Yeah, it's probably Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. This bro's about to steal a relic. This might be one of the older Indiana Jones games. Mm, I'm going to guess that's probably not the case. Now that I look at it, this is Pitfall. This is the art for Pitfall. <laughs> is Bayou Billy? I have two lives left. I, I can't even start... To, oh my god, it's another one of these motherfuckers. <laughs> oh. It's probably, we'd had Wrath of the Righteous yesterday. Maybe this is Kingmaker. Nope, this is, oh, it's the Elder Scrolls Online. <laughs> oh, man. This is really funny. Nobody gives a shit about this dude, huh? Three dudes on this lizard. They're just going to let your boy get murked back there. Shake my head. Couldn't be me. Unless there was some loot on the ground. The Elder Scrolls Online. Hmm. This really helps us out. It's newer than 2004, 
it came out on one or more of the PC, Mac, PS4, Xbox One, PX, PS5, or Xbox Series X or S. Um, it may be either a role-playing or an adventure game, which really narrows it down. And one of the themes, or more, is fantasy open world or action, and it could be either first person or third person. Or it could be first person in bird view, or it could be third person in bird view, or it could be first person, third person, and isometric, or it could be first person, third person, side-scrolling, bird's view. Um, a game from 2000 and Dishonored 2. Oh, a single-player exclusive Johnny, then. That has no first-person elements. Understandable. It has no action, which means it's either a fantasy or an open... It's a, it's a third-person game from 2015. Shadows of... Mm, Shadow of War. Hmm... Third person, it's an incomplete datum. 2015. Do you ever hear of a game called Overwatch? Do you ever hear of a game called motherfucking Dark Souls 3? Well, hmm. Quite. Two thousand and fifteen. You ever hear a little game? It's called a fucking murdered soul suspect. You ever hear of a little game called The Order eighteen eighty six? I really thought that was gonna do it, man. It is on the PS four and is made by The Odd Gentleman and published by Sierra. Return to Monkey Island. <laughs> that came out like last year, huh? <laughs> Sierra? Um, the the, pla the pla planet... Scape, Planescape Torment. That's from 1999, huh? Sh Deserts of Karak. Maybe it's Black Desert. Bam, balam. That came out in 2015, apparently. King's Quest. Telltale ass key art. Pissing me off. Not a real game. No one's ever played it. No one's ever speedrun it on the Twitch TV. That ain't working. It ain't the way you do it. In the original Old English. Two words. A mystery and thriller. From 2004, Open Windows. What's that? What's that movie? I need your help on this one. Don't don't tell me it yet. It's the Johnny Depp movie where he plays a writer, and it's called like Open Window or Secret Window. Thank you, Secret Window. Oh, I really thought that was it. It's hard to care about situations that have only been designed to obscure the ultimate twist. A Grim Brothers fairy tale taken to the outer limits. Okay, I'm, I'm covering it up. Julianne Moore movie where she's like, stop trying to gaslight me into thinking I never had a kid. I know I had a kid. Can I get the name of this movie, please? It's not Spider-Man 2. The Forgotten. Thank you so much, The Forgotten. Unfortunately, it starts with the, so I'm, I gotta get some more RAM. M. Night Shyamalan, the village. Oh, the was right. You can, I didn't know that they had that kind of tech. The village, so fresh. 
I forgot Joaquin Phoenix was in the village. This was the first one where we realized our goat was washed. Oscar nominated for what? Best twist, obviously. They should have best twisted the Oscars, man. That would <laughs> Oh man. That'd be a great category. Although I I hope you've seen the movies before they get nominated. It might ruin it a little bit. Wes Anderson, Christian Bale, Kirsten Dunst, Kirsten Dunst, Willem Dafoe, Spider Man One. Begins with the, don't worry about that one for a second, 1990 to 2000, 10, crazy beautiful. No one's going to, this is going to be like a two percenter. We take those. Kirsten Dunst begins with the, lots of options. I'm going to say the virgin suicides. 43%. I should have thought about it for a second, man. I should have thought about it for a second. Okay, every Wes Anderson movie begins with the, with Willem Dafoe in it. I'm going to, I mean, you got Darjeeling, or not Darjeeling Limited, you got um, ba -ba 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 -ba, uh, Life Aquatic, and you got Grand Budapest Hotel. He might be in others. Which one is more, I'm going to say that the Life Aquatic will have a lower percent, but I bet it's going to be close. That, I mean, it's, it's going to be this and Budapest, like neck and neck. It's going to be like a Canadian federal election. Like the winner is going to get 31% of the vote. Wes Anderson starts with the. The good news is here is you can't go wrong. A lot of stuff is going to get split because there's like 20 movies that start with the. I'm going to take the French Dispatch. Could be, uh, could be Darjeeling Limited. Probably not going to be the Royal Tenenbaums or the Grand Budapest Hotel. And then you have no choice but to go Bottle Rocket. It's the only Wes Anderson movie that's semi-less known. The, oh, motherfucker, because the, the thing I was going to say is you can't, the, the catch is everyone's going to think that Bottle Rocket is the low one, so maybe it would actually be better to play like the second lowest one. I should have played like maybe Fantastic Mr. Fox or something. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Christian Bale. Christian Bale, Willem Dafoe. Christian Bale begins with the. That's easy. Christian Bale, 1990 to 2010. Let's go equilibrium. Christian Bale begins with the. So here, now I'm out thinking myself. I'm like, number one is obviously going to be Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. But then maybe like the indie choice is going to be The Machinist. So do we go The Machinist and then feel like, you know, someone kicked us in the nuts when it gets 18% because we're like, oh, we're so smart. And then we're not that smart. Do you look for something a little different? Like you got Knight of Cups, Knight of Cups doesn't even have a the in it. You got The Prestige. Any chance The Prestige gets less than The Machinist? Ah, I got to go with my heart on this one. Motherfucker, bro! I should have gotten you the fighter. You're right. The fighter was the pick. Because now we're playing against the other nerds. The nerds are always going to take the one that makes their intelligence look the highest. So instead, I got to go one step smarter and be like, what's the least nerdy guess? Big Short would have been good, too. This is number one. I mean, he's been in a thousand movies with uh, with the in the title. But then I'm like, Christian Bale and Willem Dafoe. Was this something when he was like a, a child? Because his ass is not in Reign of Fire. I'll tell you that much. It's not in the Batman movies. Christian Bale's not in John Wick. Christian Bale's not in the lighthouse. That would have been a that would have been an interesting dramatic choice. Willem Dafoe. Christian Bale. Christian Bale. 
Willem Dafoe. Any chance Willem Dafoe showed up in Thor Ragnarok? I mean, Love and Thunder. Any chance Willem Dafoe shows up in Knight of Cups? I was just lost on that one, to be honest. Oh, he's in American Psycho. Of course. He's in American Psycho. 81.3%. Hey, at least The Dark Knight was first. Oh, no. <laughs> we, we had it flipped. We should have gone Grand Budapest, Life Aquatic, Spider-Man 2. It's a lot of disrespect on the Kirsten Dunst filmography to guess Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2. She's been in stuff. She's been in Melancholia. That's right. She has been in Jumanji. You're not wrong. At least put Eternal Sunshine. That's true. She is in Eternal Sunshine. She says, your eye drops didn't do shit, buddy. She is in Interview with a Vampire. I'm not going to hold it against her, though. New Jersey, Edmonton. Musical guest, Taylor Hall. Oilers and Bruins. Oilers, Penguins, and Sabres. 20 plus goals in a season on New Jersey. Had to put some respect on Jack Hughes. Had to put some respect on Sergey Breeland. Put some respect on Bobby Holik. Twenty plus goals in a season for the Bruins. Have to go back to uh, 1906 for this. Say Eddie Shack. That's a rare 0, 0.0 for me. Twenty plus goals in a season for the Buffalo Sabers. I'll take um, Satan. It is so funny that Miroslav Satan looks. He chose to look like this. Like at least with the goatee. <laughs> it is really funny. He knows what he's doing. Bruins and penguins. Penguins and New Jersey Devils. Penguins and Buffalo Sabres. Can't be done, it's impossible. It's not possible to do. Sergei Samsonov. <laughs> okay, just let it let it cook in your head for a second here. Overheated a bit. Take a, take a step back. This one's tough for me. I didn't follow the Devils for a long time. Any chance Bill Guerin played for both of you? Oh, he did! <laughs> Any chance Mark Recchi played for both of you? You shouldn't have, Mark. Welcome to the party. Eddie Shack's just below you. Go say hi. He's from a different era. I'm thinking, okay? Sabres, not to be disrespectful, they haven't had like that illustrious of uh, a player base over their 52-year history. I mean, they've had some, some goats, especially in the goaltending department. Also, Pat LaFontaine, probably one of the most underrated hockey players of all time. But still, after that, we're getting into kind of like Donald Audette territory. Matthew Barnaby, Miroslav Satan. Phil Housley, Phil Housley, Larry Murphy. I don't know if Larry Murphy played for you. That's the problem with this one is I don't know if Larry Murphy played for the Sabres. 
And you go here, you got your Ron Francis's, your Mario Lemieux, your Sidney Crosby's, your Evgeny Malkin's. But in terms of individuals who have passed through, your Mark Andre Fleury's, your Tom Barrasso's. That's an interesting one, Tom Barrasso. Um, your Rico Fadas, of course. Can't forget about Rico Fata. Sabers. Ah, I know I'm getting Ryan O'Reilly and Zach Cassian confused. The only common element is DUI. It's two different guys. Let me think about this. I hate to give up on one where we got a 0.0%. That's the thing. Morrissey? Morrissey was in the NHL? All right. You got me, kid. What did I miss? Evander, I always miss Evander Kane. And or Zach Cassian actually would have worked. <laughs> and then Penguin Sabres. Shiri or Evan Rodriguez. I would, I would never have gotten that one. That's fine. I can accept that. Can I get an, maybe let me check the, um, the statistics on this one. It was Tom Barras. You, what can I say? In my head, I said, that's a very interesting one. I just, I couldn't commit to knowing he'd ever been on the, the Sabres, but sure. Joseph Stumple! This one's not right. This is uh, Mark Corrigan from Peep Show. Travelé. Today, I'd like to go from Monaco to Finland. All right, Mr. Moneybags. What, a $37 beer wasn't enough for you? From Monaco, you must go to France. France takes you to Germany. Germany takes you, by necessity, to Denmark, which takes you to Sweden, which takes you to Finland. That's easy enough. It does kind of look like a penis and balls leaving a big cum stain. <laughs> I didn't make the I didn't make the borders, man. Do the US states one? <sighs> okay, fine. US here we go. They don't have a Canada one. I don't know why I check every time. Here we go. Today I'd like to go from Delaware to Maine. Motherfucker, Delaware to Maine, huh? Well, Maine is fucking up there, bro. It's the most up there. Let's connect it to Connecticut. And then I'm pretty sure like Massachusetts is going to be involved. Rhode Island is like, it's chilling over here, right? Like it's choking on the splinters. Necessarily, we will need uh, a Vermont. I mean, New Hampshire. Bro, literally just become one state. No disrespect to New Hampshire and Vermont. I know New Hampshire is weird. They're like, we're important. We're the second Republican primary and we have a special district inside of us. But like, come on, you're literally a sandwich cut in half diagonally. Like, that's a grilled cheese, bro. Massachusetts borders Pennsylvania. <laughs> and they connect via New Jersey. Which then connects, I'm going to controversially say, via New York. <laughs> oh, man. Top 99%. That's pretty good. 99%. Wow. How do you not know this? Bro, literally, again, 
I know that within America, all of the states are important. Outside of America, there's like eight important states, okay? And I'm that everything northeast of New York is part of the relatively unimportant outside of the United States bucket, okay? I'm see I'm I'm putting on kid gloves. It's a safe space. I'm not trying to be offensive. Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, not important. Massachusetts, important because they have that one city, right? Delaware, extremely unimportant, except all of my registered mail from the Alphabet Corporation comes from there, even though they're based in California. IRS, are you listening? Oh, really? Steam, Steam is based in Luxembourg, even though Gaben lives in Seattle 364 days a year? Yeah, yeah, that seems like, that makes sense. That seems like an easy argument to make in a court of law. What do I know? Fucking, what do I know, bro? He lives in New Zealand? Fucking Seattle, New Zealand, whatever. <laughs> then why did you come up with New York last? Honestly, just in my head, I know New York is cool, at least the city part of it. I didn't think it would associate with these kinds of states. Massachusetts, sure, I can see it hobnobbing with Massachusetts. The fact that New York is buddy-buddy with Vermont, lucky for Vermont, that's the only thing I'm going to say. Lucky for Connecticut. New York wishes it was part of New England? What are you, what the, what are you talking about, man? Isn't New England where New Yorkers go to buy like $175 seafood tower appetizers during the summer? Not really, we hate New York. I know, that's like when people from Abbotsford are like, oh, I'm so glad I moved out of Vancouver. Hey, do you want to go out tonight? Sure, what should we do, pizza or Chinese? I get it, I understand. Shit rolls downhill. Are we done? <laughs> we, we might be done. Oh, man. Are we done? We might be done. What other dolls do I normally do? There's some other dolls. I am the angry pumpkin. Time guesser? I'm, I'm just scared of the photo ones ever since Justin told me that one time he was playing and he clicked next photo and there were like eight dudes with weights hanging on the, the head of their penis. And it like was just them stretching their dicks to the like cartoonishly large proportions. Anyway, I'll slash marker. Slash mar you know what? I'll slash marker, then I'll do Mario Hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> 